Good morning. How are you? Happy Sunday. Well, the sun is out. It's a little warmer than I expected, and uh, it's very comfortable. So that's the good news. I've noticed, and we all feel this way, that uh, it can be depressing to see our leaders fall short of what we expect, and Republicans to do things even worse sometimes than we imagine they could do. And that's a, a deflating feeling when we need to be energized and fighting. Because what we did last year was we evicted the head of the snake when we got rid of the orange menace from the West Wing. But there are toxic remnants uh, of him in the body politic that won't go away. And partly they won't go away because our leaders aren't fighting back. Now, this past week I went to a uh, diner because I heard Fox News was going to tape it. And uh, I was curious to see how Fox operated in conjunction with the people it interviewed to tie into the election in Virginia, uh, critical race theory, and in a negative way. And there was a child there who was talking about her own safety. And because I guess I stood out, they asked me a couple of questions. But mine, uh, my remarks didn't show up on the live feed. It was going to appear <laughs> on the Saturday show. Yes, well, I'm sure it didn't. I've been there before. And so the politics of it and how rotten it's being conducted by a so-called news organization, which we know... Fox to be faux news, not real news, uh, is not surprising and yet it's aggravating. And so you want to, it gets my Irish up, I want to fight about it. And uh, yesterday, um, Obama was in Virginia, in Richmond, to speak on behalf of our good friend McAuliffe, who's running for governor on the Democratic ticket. And uh, Barack Obama said, <laughs> when he comes home, he doesn't watch that stuff. He doesn't listen to it. And you can understand why, but he obviously, and if he were entirely truthful, <laughs> would say that he's compulsive about reading everything like every person who's ever been excited or hurt by politics does. So how do we deal with it? Well, we do take vacations from watching what they're doing, but we have to persist because it can be worse, and it has been worse. And that fear that it could get worse again is something we have to deal with. Now, I'm putting together a little different podcast this week. Uh, I'm calling it Let Freedom Ring, and I, I'm going to do it for a while, just me. And uh, I want to give some specific hope to people who... Don't feel that right now because our society seems to be totally unmoored when it comes to ethics, the law, the constitution, normal civility, caring for one's neighbor, any of those things. I was uh, upset again this week when I saw that not the, the Department of Just Us, <laughs> which is what it appears to be, even in this administration, not the Congress, not anybody who is representative of any public official appointed or elected. But this time the Washington Post comes out with the full details, or as much as they have, which looks pretty full, of how there was a command center on January the 6th that had been in operation for weeks, getting ready to attack who would become president when the electors were counted on January the 6th? And the answer to that question is they had two approaches. One was, well, let's uh, claim there's law that allows him to count the electors differently and later. And even Pence <laughs> didn't go for that. And so they went to plan B, and plan B was to attack the Hill. Now, I'm going to probably write about it in my thing, my uh, po 
podcast Let Freedom Ring, and I've talked about it before. But the thing that's upsetting to me is why is it only the people find these things? Yes, I know the press belong to great corporate organizations, and uh, it says something different when they they do it than if you or I write a memo. They have a platform. But again, it's not the government that should have the highest regard for commenting on crimes against the state. Traitorous, seditious, violent, and for a man unworthy who had been beaten like a drum in an election. So I thought I would see if by changing the husk of what I talk through, in this case the podcast, I would rename it Let Freedom Ring and I would talk about it myself alone. Uh, No offense to anyone, it's just this is something I have to do myself, however poorly or excellently I do it. And I'm looking for opportunities to show how we can make a difference. And in this regard, I see the opportunities, there are small and large ones. Most of us have access to small ones. Ask a friend to go out and vote if they're in Virginia, to contribute if they're in Virginia or New Jersey, to the candidate, to push back on critical race theory, to follow the argument on November the 1st when the Supreme Court has to discuss why they're not issuing a stay for the Texas bill, which is so transparently violative of the Constitution and the specific case Roe v. Wade. You do these things. You make phone calls saying, get some backbone to your representative. And if they already have the good position, say, you're not talking it enough to it up enough to others. So do that. So that's where I see myself now. Of course, this is not different where I've seen myself most of my life. Since I was a kid, I've uh, participated in politics in some way or other, you know, gone out to political clubhouses and talk for the candidate I was supporting, including the Kennedys, uh, both when I was younger and then as I became an adult and, and could work on Ted Kennedy's campaign as an adult. So uh, I've worked on lots of campaigns. I've been a candidate myself. I've been the chair of the Democratic Committee. So I have some idea how it works, but it changes all the time. And you can't underestimate the feuds that arise between people who only have each other to share this mission, and they get jealous of each other. And I think we're seeing some of that on the Hill, a combination of an appetite to get reelected and an appetite for an issue that they disagree among themselves. Sanders, uh, some who are called progressives, some are called liberals, some are called uh, moderates, some are cons- called conservatives, blue dog Democrats. We, we can't afford these divisions I'm not saying people should give up something that they they believe in, but when the belief is facetious, as in the case of S and M, uh, cinema, a bad movie indeed, and Mansion, who's munching away at our individual rights and liberties. So what I suggest is keep on these people. They're human. We get through. They get nervous. They wonder what we're going to do, and. You know, I don't really care how we motivate them to do the right thing. I want them to do the right thing. So here I am in a more laid back day in my cathedral of trees, and it's gorgeous, huh? And uh, I'll talk to you again tomorrow, and hopefully the Democrats over the weekend have figured out a way to get something done instead of bullshitting us about what they're going to do. All the best. Bye-bye.